Hey everybody, good Tuesday evening to you. I'm uh, set up outside again in the backyard. There's just something about uh, being outside um, that I just kind of get a, a charge out of. It's a very sultry uh, Tuesday night, kind of uh, reminiscent of the movie The Long Hot Summer with uh, Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward. Great movie for those of you that are younger than 50. You may not have seen it, but check it out. It's a great movie. Um, probably going to make this one a little short and sweet because it's it's a very simple message, uh, but it's a, it's a message I think that we need to be reminded of. And I want to start by telling you a story. Um, a man by the name of Charlie Plum was a fighter pilot during the Vietnam conflict, Vietnam War. He flew um, 75 successful missions off the deck of the Kitty Hawk um, aircraft carrier. On the 76th mission, Charlie's plane was shot down and he was captured. He spent uh, the next six years in captivity in a POW camp. After uh, getting out of the camp, being you know out, out of the military and back in civilian life, years later, Charlie had developed um, uh, into quite the businessman and was uh, sitting in a restaurant one night with his wife. And a man came up to him just extremely excited and he said, you're Plum, said, you're Charlie Plum. He said, you, you flew fighter jets off the deck of the Kitty Hawk. And Charlie was just looking at him like dumbfounded because he didn't have a clue who the guy was. He said, you were shot down. And Charlie said, yeah. He said, you're right. He said, how did you know all that? He said, I packed your parachute. Charlie looked at him and he said, well, thanks. You know, he got up and shook the guy's hand. And he said, uh, I, I'm glad that you did. And the guy said, well, evidently it worked. And Charlie laughed and he said, evidently it did because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the fact that you packed my parachute. And for several days after that uh, confrontation, Charlie thought about that guy. He thought about him and tried to remember him from the Kitty Hawk. And he, he kept asking himself in his mind, did, did I ever meet this guy? Uh, he wondered what he looked like in uniform, you know, because we all change after years. <clears throat> and then it just kind of dawned on him it, it, that all of the time that he spent on that aircraft carrier with crew, he never once noticed the guy that packs his chute. A guy that actually has his life in his hands if he does his job incorrectly. And Charlie never never paid any attention to him. He said that he was, uh, you know, he was a Navy pilot. He was the, the real Tom Cruise character. You know, he's uh, bigger than life, um, not afraid of anything. You know, just go get the job done and, and get back and go on the next mission. He lived that kind of a life. And for sailors, they were the, the lower echelon of things. And Charlie, like many other pilots, didn't pay a whole lot of attention to those guys because he was a pilot. That guy was a sailor. And it made Charlie think about that. And I want to have you think about that tonight. I want you to think about the experience that Charlie Plum had. Now, you and I on a daily basis aren't uh, putting our lives at stake unless, of course, you're a first responder, um, you know, police, fire, uh, nurse, doctor, whatever. Those people do and they rely on people to make sure that things are done in the correct way so that they can go home at night and be with their families. 
but I want you to think about it from the standpoint of who in your life, in your daily life, who is it that if they weren't there, your, your life would be kind of disrupted? Or if they weren't there, it might not be as easy to be you as it is. Those are the people that, uh, that we tend to drive by, to walk by, to you know, give them a, a, a cursory hello or a nod or, or whatever. Those are the people that um, bag your groceries in the grocery store, uh, the, the clerk that checks you out at the grocery store, the, the young lady or young man in the produce aisle that, that has to go back to the cooler to get you something that you uh, particularly want. You know, it could be the, the barista at Starbucks or the historic park if you live here in Springfield. Those, those are the people that you and I come in contact with every day and they actually make our lives easier, uh, better, and less stress-free, or, or, or not less stress-free, but stress-free. How about your mailman? or the garbage man. How many of you know the name of your garbage man? I don't. I wave at him as he goes by if I'm, if I'm out in the yard or going to the mailbox, but I don't know who he is. Now, can you imagine if he decides to just, uh, or if the garbage guys decide to go on strike like they did years ago back in, in New York City and, and the garbage starts to pile up and you know we have filth everywhere or whatever, we would appreciate those guys. We would appreciate the job that they do for us, and we would probably go out there the next time and say, gosh, I appreciate uh, you doing what you do. The mail carrier, you know, we, we uh, um, got to know one of our mail carriers, not well, but I mean, we knew his name, and he's now a Facebook friend of mine, and I, uh, I think, and if, if I didn't, um, and you know who I'm, who you are. So if I didn't give you some barbecue sauce, uh, I meant to. So if I didn't, let me know and I'll get you some. That doesn't go for everybody. That goes for him. Now seriously, if you want the best barbecue sauce in America, uh, send me a shout out and I'll uh, see if I can't get you some. And if you don't believe me, I'll give you a list of of uh, testimonials. But I'm I'm digressing off the subject. Um, we just had election uh, here in Tennessee and I, I think pretty much nationwide um, the people that work in those in those polling stations you know they have they have a very specific job to do that that keeps our democracy running if it wasn't for them we would probably be doing the old fingerprint or thumbprint or, or whatever, or, you know, we'd have, could have armed guards uh, for all that meant. And all I'm trying to say is that we take, we take for granted so many people in our daily life that probably don't get a whole lot of things. Um, you know, take the, the single mom that's working three jobs just so that she can make ends meet. Um, you know, she's got a tough road to hope. She um, is supporting her family on her own income, uh, struggling because, you know, her life is probably not as she dreamed. And every day is a struggle. And then you or I come in um, to the store that she works in or you know the pharmacy that she works in or whatever the restaurant uh, is a good one and if our eggs aren't done correctly you know sometimes we just uh, I've seen people go off on waitresses and waiters just because something wasn't done to their uh, specifics and th that's so sad because those people work hard you know, having been in the restaurant business, I can tell you that restaurant employees are probably some of the hardest working people um, that there are. So 
I want you to take a, take a step back and just think about the numbers of people that you come in contact with on a daily basis. And I want you to think about the, the impact of not having them would make on your life. Think about the people in, in your company or in your business, if you're the business owner. Think about your customers. Think about the truck drivers, the, the dock loaders. Think about the person that has to put that product in a box. And, and just imagine what would happen if they didn't exist. Not just that one person. I'm saying, what if that job did not exist? What if for some reason it just went away? Our lives would be disrupted and it would cause us to, to be in um, an immediate stressful situation. So those are not the people that, that save your life uh, primarily, um, but they are people that make, a, make an impact on your life. So here's your challenge. Tonight, I want you to just sit back and think about who you come in contact with on a on a maybe not daily basis here comes my train maybe not a daily basis but uh, weekly monthly whatever think about the people that do things for you that give you service that makes your life easier and um, that train uh, conductor or not the conductor but the engineer they don't have conductors anymore on trains they have have an engineer in the front and an engineer in the back, but they don't have any conductors anymore. Strange. Anyway, think about those people that impact your life. Think about the impact that they have on your life. Think about the people that, if they were gone the next time you go to wherever they were, think about what effect that would have. You may not know that person, but if it's uh, in a restaurant situation like what I was talking about, and suddenly one person is gone, that throws the whole feng shui of a restaurant out of, out of whack. And suddenly your order is uh, slower. Uh, there, there's more grumpy people in the restaurant. There's things getting spilled and broken, and, you know, it's just havoc. Remember those people. Remember the people that you may even come to that may even come to mind that you cannot even put a face with and especially a name you know Dale Carnegie said a person's name is the sweetest sounding uh, words in the in the English language to that person when you use a person's name so make a point to introduce yourself um, Make a point to, you know, you don't have to do all this um, all at once. Hey, Brian, glad you got on. You don't have to do this all at once, but make a note of their name. And if you're like me, you better write it down as soon as you possibly can. You know, there's all kinds of tricks that you can use, uh, memory uh, joggers that you can use to remember a person's name, and I'm getting better at it. Uh, they say the reason that a person uh, doesn't remember another person's name is because they're not interested enough to remember. So, take an interest in people. Find out something about them. Find out what makes them tick. Find out what what their uh, uh, goals in life are. You know, everybody likes to talk about themselves, and it can make the the difference in a person's life that you you may never ever know. But I guarantee you, they know. And I can also guarantee you, they will not forget you. If you're the person that made that difference in their life, if you're the person that's made them smile or thank them honestly and, and genuinely thank them for doing their job, they will never forget you. There's um, a saying that, that goes, a person with a grateful spirit that shares gratitude with others 
is conditioned to be happy. I'm sorry that I can't tell you who said that, but it's a pretty cool statement. And simply what that means is, is that when you are grateful for another person or, you know, another thing in your life, it just allows you to become happier and to live a happier life. And that's all we're all wanting to do is just be happy and, and peaceful. So today I want to challenge you. Um, I want you to think of 10 people that you come in contact with on a regular basis. Um, think of 10 people that impact your life. Um, my, my buddy Brian lives out in uh, California and I don't know if he crosses a toll bridge to get to work, but you know, out there they have a lot of toll bridges. Um, and I know that the, that the speed of a toll bridge is, uh, is mind blowing sometimes, but just stop and say hi to that person. Um, notice their name tag, call them by name. It doesn't take but a second. Next time you go in a restaurant, notice that person's name. And if they don't have a name tag, ask them, introduce yourself, make a note of their name so that the next time you go in there, you can ask for that person or you can say, Hey, how you doing? You know, how's, how's your little one or whatever. And you can impact that person's life in a tremendous way. And I think if there's one thing that we're put on the world on the earth to do is to make somebody else's life a little easier for them and a little more palatable for them. So think of those 10 people. And then when you do come in contact with those 10, make a difference. Smile. Give them a, a warm thank you and mean it. And just watch the person's eyes because their eyes will light up. It, it, it's a uh, physiological uh, probability that you're going to make that person's day. And it will make your day because the more grateful you are, the better your life becomes. And that is truly why we're all here. So those of you that got on late, I'm gonna post this on my Facebook. Uh, I mean, not, well, I will post a link to it on my Facebook page, but it will be available either on our website, kenandbrenda.com, or it will be, um, uh, available on my YouTube channel. Just uh, Google uh, Ken Allen. You'll probably find 900 of us, but I'm probably going to be the, the uh, wisest looking person of all of them. That's a joke. Okay, y'all have a great week. I'll see you Thursday night for another uh, Facebook Live. I uh, posted a, um, uh, a blog yesterday and there will be another one posted tomorrow. So go on our website and check out my blog. And I appreciate every one of you guys getting on tonight. Uh, thank you for your interest. It, it makes me feel good that people are interested in, in a little bit of what I'm saying. So Brian, be safe. Joshua, have a great evening. Margie, love you. And we'll see all you guys later. Bye.